Hi, and welcome back to Level Up From Zero, where we show you how to get started with Google Cloud Platform hands-on. Today I'll dive into more details about organizing your Google Cloud user accounts and assigning them permissions using Cloud Identity and Access Management, or IAM for short. This episode builds on the previous ones, where we covered setting up Cloud Identity with our company domain and creating a resource hierarchy. Check the links in the description to watch those if you haven't already. You'll need to have an understanding of how these work before assigning IAM policies to control access to GCP resources. First things first, if your company has an existing identity provider like Active Directory or LDAP, there's no need to recreate all of these user accounts in Google Cloud. The Cloud Directory Sync tool can synchronize between your local identity system and the cloud. If you want to watch a step-by-step -step demo of an Active Directory Sync, there's one available on the G Suite YouTube channel, which we've linked in the description below. There you'll also find a link to the full written documentation for Cloud Directory Sync. Be sure to read through the process before you federate your identity provider to Google Cloud. There are some advanced topics you'll need to think through ahead of time that aren't covered in this video, such as naming conflicts and using SAML SSO for authentication. For this video's hands-on, I've already synced my company's identity directory. Here you can see the imported users. If I go to the Groups page, you can see the various departments in our company. We have Finance and Networking Admin Groups, along with the red and yellow development teams from last time, in addition to the Organization Admins group I highlighted back in the first episode. In Cloud Console, I'm logged in with an Organization Admin account. We created the Organization Folders and Projects in the diagram last time. Each of these resources can have IAM policies assigned to it, and since this is hierarchical, their descendants will inherit those policies. This means policies added at the organization resource carry through to all projects created under our organization, regardless of who creates the project or which folder it's in. This is very useful for controlling access for cross-functional teams like finance or networking admins, as we'll see in a moment. However, remember you can always override or append policies directly on a resource further down the hierarchy if you need to. Now let's actually go through and assign some example policies. First, for the finance group, we'll make a policy that grants the billing admin and billing creator roles at the organization level. This lets them create billing accounts, view payments and invoices, but not manage the contents of projects. For the networking admin group, we'll make a policy that grants the shared VPC admin and network admin roles at the organization level. This allows them to control VPCs, including subnets and VPNs, and compute engine networking like health checks and IP addresses in all projects. Now let's see how to assign permissions at a lower level of the resource hierarchy. Earlier in Google Admin, we saw that the engineering department has two development teams, Team Yellow and Team Red. I'll add Cloud IAM policies for them directly to their team folders. I'll select the folder for Team Yellow and add a policy for the team's group alias. In our company, we want developers to have Network User, Instance Admin, and Storage Admin roles along with Folder Viewer. This gives them control over the compute engine and cloud storage resources for the products they are developing. Now to do the same for Team Red. I'll find their team folder and assign the same four developer roles to it. There we go. With the proper IAM roles assigned, let's see how this affects things. First, let's check out which resources our network administrators can see. Here I'm logged in as a member of the Network Admin team. Notice how I can see all the projects managed by the development teams, since the networking admins have oversight for the network topology at the organization level. However, let me go to the Compute Engine page and look at the VM instances. I can see this VM in the development project, but notice how I cannot manage it or create a new one with this Network Admin account. Now let's have a look from the perspective of a developer on Team Yellow who is responsible for the application running in this GCP project. Here again, the roles we assigned previously are at work. This account can only see the projects in this team's folder, but back in the Compute Engine VM Instances list, notice that this account can create instances and manage the one that's already here. That's the basics of how you can extend your company's existing identity system to Google Cloud and use those identities to control who has which GCP permissions. 
By putting users into groups and giving those groups permissions at the appropriate level of the resource hierarchy, your company can maintain control and visibility of Google Cloud usage regardless of personnel changes or transfers. Remember, the roles we demonstrated in this video are only suggestions. You should choose permissions that reflect the team responsibilities in your company. Next time, we'll talk about how to get Google Cloud projects communicating to each other and your existing data centers using virtual private clouds, or VPCs. If you enjoy this kind of content, please hit the like button and subscribe so you can keep up with the latest video releases on the channel. If you click the bell, you'll be notified when one comes out. If you have a question, feel free to drop it in the comments section and we'll try and point you in the right direction. If you have suggestions for other getting started video topics, also consider leaving a comment. Thanks, and see you next time.